This, this is an interesting question. Do things like front splitters or rear diffusers increase downforce by a meaningful amount? What are the best ways to add downforce? So I'll just I'll address this real quick. We won't get too, too much into it, but it's an interesting topic. So um, a lot of the times when you see splitters on streetcars and diffusers on streetcars, no, they don't do anything because they're just they're for looks. They're emulating uh, something that a race car has. And so you do a kind of a representative artistic visual version of it that actually works on a streetcar. A real splitter does not work on a street. Car. You, there's, you can't even like, you can barely drive a, a race car across a parking lot with a splitter on it. A splitter basically uh, works to eliminate airflow underneath the car. So a really good splitter is this is is made from basically a sheet of plywood or bigger. Uh, but you, you know, most most good race car splitters are going to be at least five feet wide and six feet long. You know, it's like go under the car at least six feet and, and completely encompass the front of the car, you know, from left to right. So at least five plus feet wide. And a really good splitter has like nylon or Teflon pads on the bottom. So it can literally scrape on the road surface. So, you know, the best splitter would literally be in contact with the road surface. And the idea here is to seal the underneath of the car to keep any air from going underneath the car. Because so what happens when you, when you're going, say, 50 to 100 miles an hour, you get high velocity air going under the car and it, it creates a pressure underneath the car. And that's not what you want. You want you want to create downforce. You want to suck the car down to the road. So what you really want to be doing is trying to create a vacuum underneath the car. So a really good splitter simply seals the front of the car to the road and forces air to go around the front end and prevents hardly any air from going underneath. Um, then any air that does go underneath, you want it to flow very straight and smooth and exit cleanly out the back again to not create any pressure the last thing you want is some kind of feature in the back of the car like the rear bumper to be grabbing air and, and creating pressure so in race cars they do um, help tremendously in fact uh, it can be seconds a lap with a good splitter and diffuser setup and we, we we built one uh, we built several when we were racing and, um, you know, a, a good splitter, you have to be able to stand on. I should say like, you that's, know. that's one of the metrics, like, is the splitter going to hold yeah. up? You need to be able to like walk across the front of it without yeah. the thing. If, if you can't stand on the splitter and it can't, you know, support 150, 200 pounds, then, then it will, it will literally rip off the car because the splitter should be grabbing a lot of air and, and forcing it around. Uh, the front it, it will also create a downforce on the front lip just like a wing would in the back and so that that air pushes down on the front lip and gives you more front end grip but on a street car the best way to add more downforce is a rear wing an effective uh, installed rear wing um, could give you you know 100 200 pounds of downforce on the rear tires yeah. which is a lot of times where you need it but um, it, just like we always talk about with like Suspension setups and shock damping, you know, the same thing with aero. It's very difficult to set up. It takes a lot of testing, a lot of measuring. You really need to go to a track and make these changes, make these adjustments, measure all the right things, check your lap times. Um, you know, there's, you, you can actually measure the amount of force on the wing, on, on the splitter, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, we used to run shock pots, mm -hmm. um, so you actually measure the, the travel of the shock and you can compare yeah. before and after down the front straights to kind of see what you're kind so of loading. Once you have downforce, you get a certain amount of suspension compression, which you can measure on a, on, a, on the shock, on a shock pot, which is so the shocks will actually sit in the lower. Yeah, it's position. a big linear potentiometer that yeah. you attach uh, across the strut. But if, if, you, if you don't really know about it, if you just want to make your car look a certain way, sure, there's like front lips and things like that. That you can do but um if you want to make your car faster it's probably not the best most obvious place to look on on the street it's hard to use arrow to your advantage it's, yeah it's if, really if this is a car that sees any street time that splitter is going to have to be fully removable mm -hmm. or yeah, if it's not <laughs> if you're able to drive it on the street it's not going to be a very functional splitter 